Hi everybody, my name is Avi. I'm currently a final year student in the School of IT at Monash University, Malaysia. Today, we're honored to be sharing this space with Dr. Jane Terpstra Tong. For those listeners who may not know, I'd like to share a brief intro of our guest, who is an associate professor at Monash University, Malaysia. Concurrently, she serves as the deputy head of school for the School of Business and the chairperson of the Diversity and Inclusion Committee for Monash, Malaysia. Also, she is a management researcher specialized in cross-cultural management and organizational behavior. Our listeners may be interested to know that Dr. Jane's research publications appear in top-tier international journals that include Journal of International Business Studies, Strategic Management Journal, etc. Most recently, she also had a publication in the Journal of Vocational Behavior, the World Elite Journal in Careers. Lastly, as this Monash students may already know, Dr. Jane is an accomplished educator, as demonstrated by her outstanding teaching and innovations in curriculum design and delivery. Now, apologies for the lengthy intro. It was quite a task to summarize Dr. Jane's ever-growing accomplishments. And I haven't even mentioned the numerous awards that she's received over the years. Now, thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Jane. Thank you for your kind introduction. Well, we're just really happy to be sharing this space with you today. So let's move on to the questions, shall we? Um, okay, so starting with our first question for the day, um, what has been or is the main theme of your research in the past few years? I'm a cross-cultural management researcher, mm -hmm. and I always uh, do, if I can, cross-cultural cross management research. In the last few years, specifically, my cross-cultural management research centers on gender issues. And I have particular interest in understanding gender differences as well as gender similarity. Hmm. Okay. Um, is there a reason you chose this particular theme? Like, was there any motivation or perhaps any sort of trigger? Well, I think that is, um, um, I, I'm a data analyst myself. Mm -hmm. I love working on data. No and in the process of handling um, uh, multinational data sets, I discover that gender has become an irrelevant covariate mm -hmm. in our research model. So I go deeper recently mm -hmm. and identify that gender really does not matter in uh, some of the most important uh, behavioral outcomes and mm -hmm. uh, attitudinal outcomes we, uh, we want to investigate. Let's say, for example, subjective career success. And uh, meta-analysis study by other researchers have indicated that gender does not matter. Mm -hmm. And then I went deeper into it. I asked myself, then what matters? All right. So right. these are the question and, um, and also observation from the data mm -hmm. that really drive me to go deeper into the gender theme in my cross-cultural research. Mm -hmm. That's really interesting. So um, you mentioned that a lot of the findings included the fact that, you know, it is possible that gender does not matter. And um, so apart from this, what are the other key findings across your gender diversity research? All right. First is, uh, if gender does not matter, mm -hmm. then the next question is what matters? Right. So, <laughs> in my just uh, hot from the oven publication, mm -hmm. and uh, what matters more uh, on the outcome variable subject career success is every single individual's masculinity and femininity. Mm -hmm. So, masculinity is defined as the characteristics of more male-like. Mm -hmm. Femininity is defined as the characteristics that are more female-like. Yes. So uh, I identify that uh, people who are high on both uh, masculine characteristics as well as feminine characteristics, they are the more successful people career-wise. Interesting. And um, what of these specific characteristics? Like, is there any way to identify them? Or um, For example, uh, masculine characteristics are oftentimes related to being driven, mm -hmm. uh, purpose-driven, uh, have a direction, uh, like to be in a commanding position, mm -hmm. right? And uh, feminine characteristics are related to being tender, 
being caring, being um, patient. These are the characteristics of uh, femininity. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Um, so your current research project, sorry, center on one of the UN Sustainable Development Goals of gender equality and women empowerment. So could you tell us a little bit more about that? Um, all right, I, I think uh, first it is a really popular societal hot topic now. Yes. And uh, it's also one of the sustainable development goal. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's also personal. I, th I think that being a female in our upbringing, uh, in our career experience, we have experienced something that we feel is because of my gender and I was not given the same type of benefits mm -hmm. or, or opportunities simply because of my gender. Mm -hmm. So that is very true. I, I think that some, some uh, gender, uh, uh, gender researchers, they, have, they are driven by the same personal experience. So it started off when I was very young, mm -hmm. and my grandfather would give me half of the allowance of my brothers. Oh, as simple as this. It's not. I'm a, I'm the eldest sister. My brother is a little younger, but he has more allowance than me. And the reason is because he's a boy. Very simple. So this is something that that was in my mind. I knew it was not fair. But the thing is, it was thought also fair to my grandmother because uh, she, because she was a very capable woman. Her father decided not to send her to school, and all her life she could not even write her name. Mm. So that was uh, you know a reason that really drives me to understand more about uh, social role, gender role, mm -hmm. and why societies continue to perpetuate these type of stereotypes, these type of I call it discrimination. Mm -hmm. I think I'd really agree with the last question that why does society continue to perpetuate this even to this day, even speaking from personal experience as a as a female myself, mm -hmm. I'd say that there are still significant characteristics that you can just see in some people that, you know, they deny you certain opportunities just on the basis of your gender. They already have a sort of mold in mind that, oh, she's a woman, she can do this, 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 and that is the extent of her abilities. So... I really wish that research such as this can really sort of nail it on the head for those those people. And if there are any listeners out there who still have certain gender stereotypes that, um, you know, like Dr. Jane very correctly said, that gender does not have to hold that much importance yeah. in the amount of success, if I'm yeah. right. Yeah. Well, we, we are in a movement, though, mm -hmm. because uh, if we have to understand... You know, this type of stereotyping is has been instilled in our mind when we grew up, mm -hmm. and um, it become part of uh, part of our brain, and it was withdrawn automatically mm -hmm. when you see a female image, and so it's it's really operate at the subconscious level. Mm -hmm. So um, we are really trying to change people's mindset, and uh, I, I'm not trying to blame the male <laughs> uh, the male <laughs> leaders uh, but because uh, it is how they were brought up as well so uh, and as a matter of fact Harvard had an implicit project mm -hmm. in the implicit project there are millions of people who participated in that survey mm -hmm. and 75 percent of the of the people that complete that survey mm -hmm. were white had that implicit bias against women and the uh, finding of that survey was uh, uh, women should be uh, staying home and men should be the person to go out to work. So if you really look at, uh, we are looking at 75% of the participants in that t particular survey had that type of implicit bias. Can you imagine in our society where we still have a lot of uh, conventional mindsets? So uh, yeah, we are in a movement and I'm part of it. Well, that that was a lot to take in because, first of all, 75% is a huge, huge number. Yes. So basically a third of the survey participants. Wow, okay. Yes. Well. Even I myself, I have to admit that, you know, after the survey, I, I was really also moderately agreeable to saying that women should stay home. So 
I tell you, it's also in my in my mindset as well. Um, I have the implicit bias、hmm. against women's、uh, role in the workplace.、Hmm. Okay, I see that. I try. I、yeah. try not to. <laughs> but this is me. <laughs> this is me. I mean, of course, after after years of having been brought up a certain way, you know, there is some sort of ideology that is ingrained inside our brains, and you know, some part of us may feel a little.、Um, Okay, speaking from personal experience, some part of me could feel slightly guilty of thinking that way, but、um, only when you think about it consciously. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. yeah. But like you said, it has been ingrained in some people, and for some people, that is just how they've been brought up. So, it is possible that some people just can't help to have、um, developed that sort of implicit bias. But、um, if we're talking about culture, because、uh, some of the focus of your research is, if I'm not wrong, also on cross-cultural, right? So if we look at it from a cross-cultural lens, so for example, Western ideologies are a lot more individualist. Yep, individualistic. Correct, correct. Individualistic. <laughs> Both individualistic. are correct. Okay. Both are correct. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And、um, for, I mean, if we focus on even Malaysia or just like Southeast Asia in general,、mm. so we have more of a collectivistic mindset, right? Yep. It's more like based off of family or society, and that's、mm. how we operate. So, do you think that could play a role in any of these implicit biases? Wow, you are really asking a very、uh, important research question that I'm looking at. <laughs>、oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> you are asking if the macro societal factors have any influence on individual level factors. I mean, like, now that you worded that way. Yes, it's exactly. <laughs> and actually, this is what I have been studying,、mm-hmm. and to really looking at the macro influences、mm-hmm. on individual explanatory variable,、mm-hmm. and how these variable have impact on the.、Uh, Variable of interest in our, in our research model.、Mm-hmm. Yes, that's very much correct. And、uh, in my most recent study, the finding was the achievement culture strengthen femininity and career success. Now,、mm-hmm. femininity has a relationship with career success as well,、mm-hmm. and that is in addition to masculinity. But the to what helps? What can help femininity? Feminine people to have higher level of career success, the、uh, societal achievement culture can strengthen this relationship. That's to say, you know, for a feminine person in a achievement oriented、uh, society,、mm-hmm. they experience higher level of career success. So, well, within or beyond the topic of gender diversity, are there any further research questions or issues that you would like to conduct? For the study upon, actually,、uh, it's very similar because I was really I'm really inspired by my findings. <laughs> actually, I want I have after reading so much,、mm-hmm. I do have a gender similarity hypothesis. Okay. So、uh, what I'm gonna do is I will try to look at a large volume of studies、mm-hmm. in organizational behavior. And then look at what would be the impact of gender on the outcome variable, because I do believe gender should have a decreasing impact on、um, the typical outcome variable we we are interested in in organizational behavior, such as、uh, job satisfaction, intention to quit,、uh, such as、uh, organizational commitment. Uh, organizational citizenship behavior.、Mm-hmm. I believe that first is this is my hypothesis.、Mm-hmm. My hypothesis is there should be very negligible gender differences、mm-hmm. on these outcome variables,、mm-hmm. and I would like to do a major meta analysis to see if my gender hypothesis is correct, is substantiated.、Mm. So, if we were to sort of summarize that. So ideally, we would like to see gender being less and less of a factor when it comes to career success. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Right. I mean, yes. And in an in an ideal world, gender equality would be you know perfectly balanced. But yeah, we're far far from achieving that. No, no. Actually, I have to I have to correct that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Actually, gender is irrelevant to subjective career success in my study. 
Okay, yes, yes. Yes, that's already proven. <laughs> that's already, yes. all right? That's already proven mm -hmm. uh, with uh, over 5,000 observations worldwide. Mm -hmm. um, by worldwide, do you mean, uh, would you like to elaborate on like which sort of cultures did you look at? So I have uh, 40 in, in the uh, recent study I published. Mm -hmm. I had exactly 40 society samples, mm. and uh, that comprised about 5,300 observations. In that sample, I didn't have any sample from Arab countries. But apart from that, I have societies from 10 of the 11 uh, major cultural clusters. Mm. So um, that cover Anglo uh, Anglo countries, that cover Latino countries, mm. Latino European countries, Latino American countries, mm. and uh, East Asian and Far East. Yeah, mm. yeah, that's that's really interesting to note. Moving forward, what kind of major challenges do you predict for researchers or even just you know your average advocate for equality? What sort of challenges do you predict that we'll face? Um, I think it's the mindset of the men, hmm. especially the um, subconscious mindset of the men, hmm. because uh, currently in major societies or leading economies, we still know that uh, the heads, like in uh, major international organization, mm -hmm. uh, in uh, major uh, multinational firms, global firms, uh, the heads are still men, yeah. and. Um, uh, or masculine men, to be more masculine. specific. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so um, it is not easy to change uh, the subconscious mindset of decision maker mm. because if we continue to have the decision maker who subconsciously do not see the merits uh, produced or performed by female uh, colleagues, so those female uh, may not be able to move up to the top, mm -hmm. and this is one challenge. The second challenge is about the uh, the general acceptance of family roles between men and women, mm -hmm. and uh, even in the most advanced countries in terms of uh, feminism, and we still see majority of the family roles are played by female. Yeah. And a majority of the work roles are played by men. Yeah. So um, I, I would say uh, it's, it's not easy to change, um, but I would, I would highly encourage people to really think about there could be stay-home dad that play the role so much better than a uh, working mom. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and just allow it to happen. So I think that's number two. Mm -hmm. And number three is um, how the society accept, uh, uh, allow a longer career span for women. Mm -hmm. And uh, bear in mind that um, uh, we are living longer and longer. Mm -hmm. And uh, between men and women, biologically, statistically, uh, women live longer than men. So <laughs> worldwide, <good> <laughs> the lifespan of women is two years older than men. Mm -hmm. All right, but yet in uh, some societies, uh, women are asked to retire earlier, mm -hmm. and uh, women are not uh, given the type of work opportunity like men, even when they are at an older stage. Mm -hmm. But yet, you we have to remember that a lot of women they need career breaks during their life, so that they can meet the needs, like take care of their family. Mm -hmm. But when they after the career break, they may they they want to pick up you know, their career again. Mm -hmm. But the society, uh, society does not really give the same, you know, opportunity for them. Mm -hmm. So in a way, I would say um, to reach really gender equity, uh, we need more uh, open mindsets, mm -hmm. uh, at the, especially from the decision makers, and to really allow, really look at the statistics look at the biology and, you know, allow, legislate to allow women mm -hmm. to have more opportunities instead of, um, well, you're at that age, <laughs> you should retire. Oh, you're men, you're at that age. I know you have responsibility to your family. You can continue. So, but a lot of this thing is so subconscious yeah. and uh, it's not uh, explicit, but mm. older women, they feel it. 
very strongly. Yeah, definitely respectful outlook towards the opposite gender like for for you know the manly men the masculine men out there no we should yes, also definitely. you know consider there are feminine men for sure for and sure. masculine women yeah. and they are all right everybody <laughs> should be equally yes, respected exactly. given an equal platform exactly because that's the whole point of diversity and inclusion right like yeah. just all inclusive all like respectful yeah. towards each and every type that is out there there is no one true at the top, whatever that means. Well, um, we respect differences. Yes, respect our differences. Yeah. yeah. Yes, definitely. Moving on. Um, your preferred research method is survey research with an emphasis on big data analysis and multi-level modeling. So is there a specific reasoning behind these preferences or is it just how it works? Well, it, I would like to talk about the history of my research thoughts. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I did some qualitative studies and I, I did uh, uh, quantitative studies. You know, for some reason, I, I feel very excited when I see data sets. Okay. Yeah. Whenever I see data set, right away, I will put it into my statistical software <laughs> and then looking at, okay, what is the distribution? Are there, you know, missing values and how do we do all these missing values and how should I do it or should I impute it or should I drop it? And I like to make all this decision. I, you know, when I see data, I right away, I lo really love to see the pattern, you know. And um, I know not a lot of people will feel like me seeing data and get excited, but I'm that type of person. So um, I think about 10 years ago, I pretty much decided that, okay, I'll go for uh, quantitative studies mm -hmm. and uh, I would put a lot of effort in learning the state of the art practices. Mm -hmm. And um, I really trained myself to be very good at what the software I'm using. Mm -hmm. And uh, in my field, Single level analysis is already in, insufficient, mm -hmm. uh, especially uh, when I do cross cultural studies involving over 30, 40 countries. So, inevitably, I have to apply uh, the multi level modeling. Multi level modeling is a relatively new uh, research uh, technique. Mm -hmm. As a researcher, we should stay on top of the most advanced tools. Mm -hmm. So um, this is the most advanced tool in my <laughs> field, and I certainly, you know, I interested in working along that line. That's amazing, actually, because um, a lot of people look at, you know, only qualitative um, research as, you know, something that could be interesting to all sorts of people. Like, you know, it can be put down in layman language and such, but I feel that quantitative research is just as important and just as interesting to look at actually like as a as a computer science student myself um but definitely I, i'm sure other researchers or other um you know people who love crunching numbers and data would share the same enthusiasm that you have for data finally i'd like to move on to our last question for the day what message would you like to leave our listeners with uh, as a cross-cultural management researcher and um, my recent findings uh, and also uh, my recent experience in working with people from different culture, mm -hmm. uh, people from different genders, uh, I would say uh, we have to be very mindful about our stereotyping. Mm. and. Um, one research finding that I got uh, was uh, there, 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 there are lots of uh, within nation co uh, variation in values. Mm -hmm. Now, say for example, in Malaysia. So we say, oh, Malaysian will think this way. You are from Malaysia, so you got to think that way. No, we cannot do that. Mm. All right. It's so obvious Malaysia is a multi-ethnic, multicultural society. Yes. And within country, multicultural differences are huge, mm -hmm. all right? So Malaysia is, uh, is, is clear. What about Americans? Are Americans all the same? No. If you really look at, you know, uh, empirical studies, the findings show that the people on the, uh, living in the Pacific Northwest versus the people living uh, near the Southwest and Southeast, mm -hmm. they are of different value orientations. So um, the first thing I would suggest to the audience is do not make country stereotypes. 
Mm -hmm. Do not, you know, look at individuals' background, cultural background, and believe they represent mm -hmm. the cultural background. That's the first message. The second message that I would like listeners to, to note is gender, the same thing. Mm -hmm. Don't judge a person's personality or their behavior, their attitude by their gender. Mm. Because every, individual's, every individual is different is an amalgamation of a lot of different socialization experiences. Mm -hmm. So uh, in a way, you know, just don't judge a person by their categories, <laughs> period. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's, don't I, judge a book by its cover. Yeah, yeah. I'd, say, I'd <laughs> say, like, at least for the listeners out there, that's a pretty commonplace sort of, you know, phrase that they should already be familiar with. And just maybe try to apply it more in their daily lives. And, you know, one day at a time, we can try and relearn some of the things that we've been taught as children. I hope our listeners have something good to take away from that. Do we have any other closing re remarks for the day? <laughs> it is my pleasure to be interviewed by you. And um, you ask very, uh, very interesting question. And thank you so much. And uh, really value this opportunity. Um, thank you. Thank you so much for the opportunity. This is an incredibly rare opportunity for me. So thank you so much for having me. You did well. Me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So with that, we'll be wrapping up the podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you.